Yo, what's up everyone? This is Vitor, according to the latest polling data. We are back with an interesting question submitted by one of our viewers. Before we get started with the video though, we have a big announcement, so make sure you watch the video until the very end. A ninja emailed us the following circuit from their interview and said the main objective was to plot the net label to be out. As with any of our videos, we are going to give you about 10 seconds to pause the video and try to solve the problem on your own. Alright, let's try to tackle this particular problem as if we were interviewing with someone. As seasoned ninjas, when we see a transistor in any type of question, we should always ask, can I assume the transistor to be ideal? Why is this question so important? Well, depending on where the interviewer is looking to take the question, non-idealities such as channel link modulation, leakage, body effects, among others, can be critical when answering the question. Besides, assuming idealities makes the problem orders of magnitude simpler. So, why would you shoot yourself in the foot by assuming complex effects at the very beginning of the question? Let's assume the interviewer said something along the lines of, we can assume the device to be ideal. So what does it mean that we can assume ideal behavior? If you have been watching this channel long enough, you should already know the answer to this. To the first order, it means if VGS is less than the threshold voltage, then the device will be fully off with zero leakage. If VDS is greater than the overdrive voltage, then the device is operating in saturation. Otherwise, the device is in its linear region. Rather simple, right? The follow-up question we should ask is, what can we assume the threshold voltage to be? Sometimes interviewers will omit obvious information just to see if you're paying attention and don't start to blabber an answer without all the critical information needed. For this one, let's assume the interviewer said, let's leave the threshold voltage as a variable called VTH prime. This should already give you a clue that the interviewer may have follow-up questions about the threshold voltage based on the results of this question. With that information in mind, I think we are able to start solving the problem. What else would you ask if you were faced with this interview question? Let me know in the comments down below. Alright, so as a standard procedure, remember that the voltage across the capacitor cannot change instantaneously. So at time 0 minus, the capacitor has an ideal condition of 2 volts across it. Then, at time 0 plus, the voltage at the source is 3 volts. Since the voltage across the capacitor wants to remain constant, that means the negative terminal jumps to 3 volts, while the positive terminal jumps to 5 volts to maintain the voltage across the capacitor. So we can mark the voltage at net V out at time 0 to be 5 volts. we should now look at what the operating region of the transistor is. Clearly, VGS is 3 volts, so the transistor will be conducting when VGS is greater than VTH prime. We can tell the interviewer that we will assume VTH prime to be less than 3 volts for now. If that's the case, then we can say that the device is in saturation as long as VDS is greater than VGS minus VTH prime. If the device is in saturation, it will be acting as a current source, since its VGS is fixed. So the value of V out will decrease linearly until VDS is less than VGS minus VTH prime. Once this happens, the device enters its linear operating region and the circuit simply turns into a CR high pass filter. Its time constant for simplicity will be RC. I'm sure you ninjas will be able to come up with the equation for RDS. So 
the voltage waveform after hitting the critical value of VDS less than VGS minus VTH prime will go from being linear to non-linear exponential decaying until the voltage reaches zero. There you have it, another great question from our amazing community. Of course, the interviewer can expand on the questions on literally any direction he or she may want. For example, can we rework the problem assuming the polarity of the capacitor is now flipped? Also, what happens if we have a negative threshold voltage? What if we assume non-ideal devices? Among many other directions. So never be satisfied with these videos alone. Always dig deeper. A great way to keep digging is by subscribing to our Patreon channel. Here you will find questions that will stimulate these thoughts in your mind as you solve the problems. And now, on to the big announcement from yours truly and everyone behind the scenes here at Hardware Ninja. We often get messages from the community, whether on Patreon or through email, about how important it is for everyone to have direct feedback on their attempts at solving our interview problems. So, we have come up with what we believe is an innovative way to stimulate this feedback. As of the posting of this video, you will find a new section on our Patreon channel called The Dojo Challenge. Let me tell you how this will work. Every other month, starting on the second Monday of January, we will be posting weekly technical interview questions. Initially, we will focus on two domains, analog and digital. You will have the opportunity to work on these questions at your own pace and submit your answers. Every Saturday at noon, Pacific time, the submission window for that week's question will be closed and our judges will grade your answers from a 0 to 100 scale. The judges are seasoned engineers that may include principal engineers, senior engineers, and or senior directors at some of the largest corporations in the world. Every Monday at 12 p.m. Pacific time, there will be an updated leaderboard posted on the Patreon channel. You will be competing to be among the top engineers on that leaderboard to earn prizes, features in our LinkedIn page, possible recommendations for jobs, and most importantly, tremendous exposure to step up your career. The best part of it all, it's all free for anyone that chooses to participate. A quick disclaimer here. Unfortunately, Patreon does not allow us to hand out free memberships, and the minimum charge is one US dollar. Since we would like to keep this free for everyone, we will be issuing refunds to this subscription tier alone after you have signed up. This will allow us to give you access without you having to pay for it. The sign up window is now open until January 8th. Once you have signed up, we will send you a message through Patreon to ask for the name you would like displayed in the leaderboard, whether you are a working professional or a student, and your years of experience. If you are amongst the top ninjas by the end of the challenge, we will reach out to you via Patreon to arrange for your prize delivery. This upcoming challenge will be our pilot program and will start on January 9th. Are you as excited as we are? Let us know by leaving us a thumbs up on this video. Hope to see you all in the challenge. Cheers!